Hi knitters, how are you? I'm back from my um, Florida adventure. I went with my family last week to, we went to Sanibel Island in Florida. It was great, it was very nice weather, it was relaxing. Um, my girls went with me and the boys have different uh, Easter schedules, or not Easter, but spring break schedules, so that um, they weren't able to go with us this year. So it was, seemed very small, small, like a small little group. <laughs> Four people for us, that's, that's a very small trip. Uh, it was great. We had a funny um, kind of travel plan because my husband is, he's a great, um, trip planner. He, he really enjoys, you know, searching out different places to stay and um, flights and things, you know, always trying to save money. And when you travel with a big family, that's usually the main goal. <laughs> you want to be comfortable and safe, but yeah, you want to, uh, you know, go as inexpensively as possible because you have so many people. So he does a great job at that, but we took this funny um, flight plan. We drove down to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, which is, I don't know, maybe a couple hours away from Madison. And there was a little tiny airport, and I love tiny airports. So, um, you know, there's nothing better than that when you travel a lot and you don't have, <laughs> there's one room and, it's very simple and fun. So I really like that. But um, we went down to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and we flew out of there on this airline called Allegiant Airline, which I had never heard of before. And I kept asking my husband if it was a fake airline, but <laughs> it wasn't. Uh, we got there back, so I'm here to say it's, it's not a fake airline, but um, a goofy airline a little bit. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to say it was... Um, a little bit strange. We we went into this, uh, you know, one room. I mean, it was smaller than the Madison Airport. I, I can't explain it other than it was one little tiny room. We went through uh, security, which I found just so funny. This, it was, you know, we were the only ones going through. There was no line or anything. And it was almost like the <laughs> staff was kind of trying to find something to do so that, you know, when people start, when anyone would come through the security, they would start, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I can explain it, but like, for example, you know, I've been through, I travel quite a bit and I kind of have a system down for when I go through security. I, I take, I always wear a watch and kind of old school on that. So I wear a watch, I usually wear a belt. And I always take that stuff off because um, sometimes it'll cause a problem, sometimes it won't, but just as a habit, you know, so that I, I try to kind of predict what will cause a problem or not. So I um, took my watch off and actually I don't think I was wearing a belt, but I took my watch off and then um, as soon as I took my watch off, the woman who <laughs> was this, you know, security person said, um, do not take your watches off. It's not necessary. You never take your watches off. And you know she had, she stood there and watched me take my watch off. So then she was doing it like in that kind of lecturing form. So I thought, oh, well, you know, whatever is kind of, I mean, it was totally fine. But <laughs> then I proceeded to take out my laptop, you know, and put it in a bin. And you know, every airport's different, but uh, they, a lot of times they'll say, you know, they want you to take all of your electronics out and put them in a bin. So, you know, I took, I had a Kindle, I had a lot of electronics. I had a Kindle, I had an iPad, and I had my phone. And as soon as I took those things out of my bag to put in one of their, you know, bins, um, she started saying, and you don't need to take out your iPad, your, you know, in this kind of loud lecturing voice. And we were, we were the only ones in there. So I don't know. It just struck me so funny. It's like every move I made, um, I took my, I had a sweater on. And I took my sweater off because a lot of times if you have a sweater or jacket, they want you to, um, 
<laughs> remove that, you know, before you go through. So I removed that, and then of course she commented in her loud lecturing voice that I that I wasn't supposed to remove my sweater. So um, I don't. The whole thing was like like every move I made, <laughs> she would make some big, you know, production like comment over that I wasn't supposed to do whatever it was, and which is totally fine. But I just found it so funny. I was like trying not to laugh when it was going on because. You know, it was very funny. So, uh, and and then we flew to um, the Punta Gorda airport, which was just as small and quirky. And so, um, I don't know. It was just, I'm trying to think of how to even explain it. But the, the flight on the way down, we were delayed an hour or two. I can't remember exactly how much, but it was a while. And they, um, the... Um, they, someone was sick on the plane, so, you know, they had to have a stretcher, meet the plane, and they had, you know, an ambulance and stuff, so, um, they pulled this woman out, but then she had, they had used the oxygen on the plane with her, so we were delayed an hour or two because they had to, um, drive a mile or two down the road and get the oxygen tanks refilled and then drive all the way back. On the way back from um, Punta Gorda to Cedar Rapids, our flight was delayed five hours. It's the same airline. Um, and they said that someone on the crew was sick, but then later they said um, they were short pilots. There was a pilot shortage, and then they had to switch planes, and they had to fly a plane in. And I was joking to my husband that I think maybe they only had two planes. So, <laughs> you know, like if one was busy or something, I don't know. It seemed like, you know, there weren't like, there weren't a lot of planes around. There weren't, anyway, it was just, it was very goofy. <laughs> so then we heard, because our flight was delayed five hours, that we, we got $50 vouchers. Not sure we want to fly that way again, but... Uh, and then when we got home, there were there were no vouchers. They said, "Oh, check online, you know, check your account." And no vouchers to be had. So I'm not sure if we would have used them anyway. But oh, goofy, fun, goofy travel stories. I'm always entertaining to me. So I hope you had a good, uh, you know, spring break if you had one at this time or or holiday weekend if you celebrate, or whatever it was. I hope you just have had a good stretch. I had a good stretch because I finished my, and look at, there's something, now I see this. When I'm holding this up here, I think I made one of these. Or one of these is either short or long, or just kind of looks disturbed. Maybe it's not gonna be that bad. Not sure. I haven't blocked it, so I think it will block out. But um, about three years ago, I started a hitchhiker shawl, and I finished it, so I'm so excited over it. Um, here it is, and uh, it's beautiful. I got this roving as a gift from a bag of fiber from my friend Diane of Sheep Dreams. Um, I think it's Kentucky Sheep Dreams. She's a great blog, so you should go read. I talk about her all the time. But um, she gave me this. She's a, a farmer, and she has sheep, and she has all this fiber that she has from her sheep. She's a spinning, knitting, um, cooking, baking genius. I feel like I just mentioned her before, but I... Uh, oh, look at... Oh, that's so funny. When the light... Wait, can you guys see that? Look. Do you guys see that, right? there. That's where the yarn is super thin. Because <laughs> this was one of my first, um, oh my gosh, I didn't notice that. Look at that. That's not a hole. The yarn is so thin right there. Do you see that? Oh my gosh, I'm going to duplicate stitch that. I probably wouldn't notice that unless I had seen myself holding that up like that. Oh, that's so funny. This literally is one of the first hand spun yarns that I ever made. Um, and in fact, so it's actually 
I'm pretty impressed by it because I really didn't know what I was doing very much, but um, the fiber was very wonderful. It's these gorgeous fall autumn colors. Um, this was a hard knit for me. It was um, difficult and hard to be motivated to knit, even though you're doing these little uh, spiky, you know, zaggedy, zigzaggedy uh, cast offs and um, increases. It, it still was very tedious to me. And I did 41 um, little, I don't know what you call, what are you calling these points? I did the 41 just as recommended in the pattern, um, but I sure do love it. Now that it's done, I think it's just beautiful and um, lovely. So I think I'll be actually wearing it a lot. Uh, I mean, it's gorgeous. So uh, I love it. That's a Martina Bem pattern. Ooh, it had some fibers on it. Sorry. Ooh. Um, and she, of course, is just this wonderful genius of a shawl knitter. And I, she does other things, too, that are really wonderful and clever, but yet yeah, very simple. And I think that's what's so appealing about her um, designs is that, um, you know, sometimes making the simple things uh, appealing and... Uh, looks so good and compelling uh, for people to knit is, is so incredibly difficult because you can't use all your tricks and um, that makes the simple knit sometimes uh, the hardest to design because you're so you're limited you know if that's your goal then you're really limited on what you can do so here it is I just think it's really nice. I can't wait to block it because it's already so drapey and wonderful, but definitely just um, duplicate stitch that little spot. Oh, that was really crazy thin. It was like a little hair. <laughs> like I had knit a little <laughs> hair throughout, so that makes me laugh. Uh, on my trip, I did some sock knitting, which was really fun, and I did show these on a blog post, but I'll just show them because sometimes when you see them in person, it makes it kind of fun. This is this wonderful opal yarn, and I just think this is the cutest sock yarn around. It's really unusual and different. This is the um, Opal Hunter Twasser's Work. It's W-E-R-K 9556. And I got this as a gift from Joanna Johnson. And this is the artwork that is inspiring the sock. So, I mean, what do you think? Is that inspired by there? I guess so. I thought it was funny because the flight attendant said to me, um, she thought I had knit in, or not knit in, but like stitched on little flowers in here. But I told her it was right in the yarn. And then she thought that was really cool. That, that's, that was my favorite section. <laughs> I was knitting. Anyway, fun and cute, and I just um, barely started the second sock on those, but I will get those done. I'll bring them maybe on my trip this weekend, and hopefully I have time to work up another sock. Hopefully I won't have any five-hour delays <laughs> while I'm sitting there by myself. And then I finished my Regia um, Super Jacquard socks. I have shown these a couple times and also in the blog, but I have two. And they're wonderful and fun. Um, the colorway, it says Regia Super Jacquard, and the colorway is K O L I B R I, Colibri. And then I have the wonderful Starry Starry Night socks. This is Opal in the Vincent Van Gogh. Um, color uh, ways that are now discontinued. So I did the Hermione's Everyday Sock pattern, which is a free pattern. I talked about all this on the blog, but you can kind of see there's a little pearl detail. And uh, it was okay. I really, while I was doing it, I missed making my 
regular stockinette stitch, stitch socks, so I probably won't do that again for a little bit. Every once in a while I like to do some sort of little stitch pattern, but. So, um, I don't know if you can still get this or not. Sometimes you can look stuff up on eBay or Etsy and people have, you know, the full collection of, of these sock lines. Um, this uh, Super Jacquard was available on Etsy. Someone told me they went to Etsy and looked it up and it was on there. So, I don't know if you can get it or not. Now, this is another one I got. Um, that I was really excited about. This is another Hunter uh, Twassers, Hunt, Hunter Twassers, oh, I guess I'm saying it wrong. Hunter Twassers Work 625 Winter Build. And um, so it's another art inspired. Here's the art. And here's the sock. And look, it does have glitter. Oh, I think that's really they sort of have Christmassy type colors. So I don't know if that's intended to be kind of Christmassy, but um, I don't, I can't really tell what that picture is, although it has snow and I don't know. Can you that? What is that? I don't know. I should look it up online. Maybe I'll get a better view. It's hard to see. But I see wind, um, like snow and I don't know. It's really pretty though. And it's, um, I have never used a sparkly opal before. So I was really excited to try that. So that's going to be coming up after I finish that um, um, second sock. I will probably cast it on. Oh, I like this. This is my Shalom. I knit this a while ago. And I love these big brown buttons I put on. I kind of, I think I modified this pattern a little bit, but because I don't think it had four buttons, but I modified it. I love it. I still love the style that has just a few buttons at the top, and I love it. So I know some people have kind of fallen out of love with that, but I still like it. All right, so I'm gonna show you quickly just a few things. This isn't gonna be really long. Um, I'm heading heading off to Dayton, Ohio this weekend for a Knitting Guild retreat there, and I'm really excited about it. I'm teaching four really fun workshops, and um, they're gonna be big, huge classes, and I guess I have one of those um, projectors uh, for my, to show my um, demonstrations. So I have not done that before, so I'm, I'm excited to try that and see see how that works. Um, but with a group that large, it would have been um, slightly impossible to do small group demonstrations, which I like to do in my classes, but only when they're smaller. <laughs> I can't imagine doing that with 50 people. That'd be tough, pretty tough. All right, well, I wanna share with you this book that I've had for a long time and I, um, need to review it because it's just a gorgeous book by Mel Clark. She's one of my favorite designers. She's from New Zealand, but um, she's lived in the United States off and on. And uh, I believe now she is back living in the United States. Um, they moved back to New Zealand for a while and then I think they were away from their children, their you know adult children, so then they moved back. But Mel's a wonderful designer. Um, this book is called Knitting Gifts for Baby, and look, just look at the cover. I mean, isn't that, that's just adorable, this hat. Oh, I really, I love it. And she has such a sweet uh, design aesthetic. It's just very um, endearing and charming. I love this idea for a little girl's sweater. She put little butterflies I, think, I didn't read that pattern, but I think it's like eye cords, and then under the eye cord on the fabric, she's made little butterflies. I think that's so clever and cute, and a little girl would absolutely love that. Um, you all should get this book. I mean, look at, she's the simplest little patterns that would become a mainstay in your baby um, knitting repertoire. It's adorable, it's so sweet. She uses really cute yarns. 
And this is an example of hers too. She just does a little, I don't know if you can see that, but there's just this little tiny detail at the back there, a little increase um, detail is so charming and sweet. Um, I won't show you every, oh, every pattern, but oh, look, this is the butterfly. I mean, look how cute. Um, is that, please, that's so cute. You guys, you have to. <laughs> Can someone knit that and put it on a baby and then maybe you could bring it, bring the baby over to my house? <laughs> I just want to look at it. This is so cute. She has booties, um, an ice cream cone rattle. She does toys too. Ice cream cone rattles. How cute are those? Uh, more little sweaters, a little um, wrap, kimono style sweater. Oh, uh, she's a little... Um, cable sweater, and I love this kind of neck, like all those little baby onesies have that neck that makes it easy to put on because babies have, uh, their heads are not in line proportionally. Their heads are much bigger um, than their bodies. Oh, so very, very cute. She has a blanket. Everything's charted, written out. Some very simple blankets. Oh, look, she's a little color work hat with ear flaps. It's got um, birds, cats, and dogs on it. I mean, how good is that? Little kids, oh, and a little heart on the ear flap. Oh, she's just, she's divine. That's made out of koi goo. Wonderful. Oh, I love it. Simple hats. You know, everybody needs that. A little t-shirt pattern, more booties, a little poncho. That's so cute. A baby pap papoose, a little bib, booties, a little shrug, bolero, kind of thing. That cute hat that was on the cover of this baby has the cutest cheeks. Look at those cheeks. That's a good, that's a good baby. <laughs> I love those baby cheeks. Oh, a little dress. I mean, it's so simple. I mean, do you see just how incredibly simple these patterns are? But they're divine. They're gorgeous. Um, oh, she even has a little teddy bear. Oh, that mouse. She's so good. This book is a winner. Photography is beautiful. Uh, it's by Trafalgar Square. And... Uh, if you leave a comment, I'm going to, um, I didn't pre, um, uh, check into this, but I'm, I'm sure I can do a giveaway. I have talked to Mel and I, I will, um, set that up so we can do a giveaway, but I, I really think you'll like this book. It's called Knitting Gifts for Baby by Mel, Mel Clark. If you don't want to join the giveaway, just please, you know, go get this book, um, Mel really is one of my favorite designers. Her website slash blog is a delight. I have it linked on my sidebar of my blog. Oh, no, maybe I don't anymore. It's slipslipknit.com, slipslipknit.com. Oh, she's lovely, incredibly talented. That book, that makes me want to knit everything in that book. <laughs> I want to knit it all. It's so good. Okay, I'm going to show you something I've had for a long time. So leave a comment, and I'll write all the um, things I talk about up in a, a list with links and everything for you um, for this um, post. And then I'll also um, remind you that you, if you leave a comment on the blog, I will um, pick a winner. And then we'll have... I probably won't pick a winner until you get back from Ohio. And then I'll pick a winner, and we'll, I'll get, make arrangements to get a book sent out to you. All right, so quite a long time ago, I really think it was a long time ago, uh, I ordered a kit from the Plucky Knitter for the wonderful uh, Vera Valimaki's Color Affection Shawl, which probably every person out there has knit. Uh, I have not. I have not knit it yet, and I want to, but you know, part of my thing was that I wanted to finish this hitchhiker before I started because it's another gigantic uh, garter stitch shawl, and I just didn't think I could take on another garter stitch shawl. 
um, in addition to this one, which I had, I literally struggled so to finish this. It, I don't know. I'd start knitting it, and I don't know why it had this effect on me, but I could, I could not get it going. It's very bad. So anyway, here at like you don't know, I'm going to show you anyway. Here's the color affection shawl. It's this glorious stripy short row garter stitch shawl. It's super long, and and this this shawl I can wear it uh, wrapped around my back and then tied in the back, not with a bulky weight sweater underneath. But I have always wanted one of those shawls that you could uh, um, wrap around your shoulders, cross in the front, and then tie in the back. And and this one I know this one will work because it gets super long and then it's pretty shallow too, which is good because I'm. Um, I'm a little tiny person in stature, so um, that will work well for me. Yeah, it looks like this is 94 and a half inches long, so this will definitely fit around me. But I'm going to show you these colors. Um, this is the plucky, what is this one called? The Primo. It's 70, um, 25 MCN, Merino Cashmere Nylon. So I have a colorway En Vogue. I have the colorway Faded Grandeur, which is an olive color. And then I have the Elegant, Elegant Elephant. So it's like a gray olive and this kind of um, orchid color. That's pretty good representation. So those are um, beautiful. Now, I don't know why I ordered this um, olive color because um, this kind of has a little bit of that too. I have olive skin and um, when I wear this color, it's not, this is not a great color for me. So I'm trying to figure out where, I think I'll do this for that, the edging at the bottom and maybe I'll do the gray. I'm trying to look for the most unobtrusive uh, way to incorporate this. I love this color. Don't get me wrong. I think it's so beautiful and I have not knit with a plucky yarn before so I'm really excited to do that because um, Sarah is I've known her for years and years and years and yet I have not um, I knew her kind of bef before she became the plucky knitter <laughs> I kind of knew her a little bit and um, she sold me I remember one time she sold me some Vesper yarn before I mean you couldn't get your hands on it pretty pretty much and I don't think I don't think Ravel already had started yet. So it was a different day and it wasn't even that long ago. But anyway, so that's one thing I want to start. The other thing I'm really excited to start is this fantastic lefty. I am doing another version of them. Lefty, and I know everybody's knit this already, probably too. I'm a little slow to the game, but it's this. And I've seen this when I've gone to events I just absolutely love it when people are wearing this shawl. It's stunning on, so elegant and beautiful and eye-catching. I that I'm I'm really a fan of Martina's. She um, actually it was really fun. She walked by me at Vogue Live in New York, and I you know when you see someone and they look so familiar but you're not quite sure who they are. Well, after she walked by, I thought it was. That's Martina. I'm sure I want to tell her that I love her. <laughs> I didn't track her down. I didn't, didn't want to you know, bother her too much, but in my head, I thought, oh, I would have loved to have talked to her. But now, MissBabs.com, the lovely Miss Babs, who is a wonderful dyer, she has these sweet, sweet little kits for the lefty. And I hand wound all these colors. I got the kit from MissBabs.com. It's like berry colors. They're like purples and dark, dark purple. They're all purples. I think that's showing up kind of brown, but kind of like burgundy and, and sweet pinks and um, rosy colors. And then I got, this is the Lefty set. And this is slate gray. So it will be these right? <laughs> That's good. That's good stuff right there. Yeah, Slate and Reds Lefty. And uh, I am pretty darn excited about that. 
It's in Yummy 2-ply. And you have to buy the pattern separately. It's MissBabs.com. So that's the other one I want to start. Uh, those are my little kit. I don't usually buy kits, but um, I, I think I should buy more. I really like them. <laughs> I think that's really fun. Uh, so I'm going to put my kit back in here. And what was the last thing I was going to show you? Maybe that was it. So, um, I am off to Ohio. I'll be back next week. I'll try to get this up as quickly as I can. Um, you can uh, subscribe to me on iTunes now, and it will pop up on whatever your um, feed catcher is. I use Downcast on my um, iPhone and my iPad, and I, I love that app. It's a really good one. Um, yeah, and so you can go check me out on, on iTunes now. I don't know why I had a cute logo and a little description. It, it did, has not shown up on iTunes, so I have no idea how to fix If anyone knows how to fix that, on um, the downcast, you know, when you're scrolling through your podcast, my logo, it's on my um, sock drawer, it did show up, and the description showed up. So I don't know why it's not on, on iTunes. That's always kind of a mystery to me. But um, love you guys, and I'll be back soon with much more. Take care. Bye.